tell us about the book and uh, what's happening with it. Well, the book was generated. Uh, it was not an initiative of my own, but um, in fact, I don't know that I would have ever um, thought about it. Uh, the, the project, the way it's it's unfolded, um, but um, yeah, Jared Oliphant through contacts that, that he had at um, Crossway. Uh, I was sort of contacted um, about with the idea that my ex and Paul say, I, <clears throat> all right, I started out in New Testament for 20 years and taught um, exclusive New Testament courses. Um, and then with uh, particularly uh, turnover in the faculty, uh, uh, there was a need in systematic theology, and so my interest had always been on the um, sort of the intersection of, of you know, well, New Testament theology and systematic theology are, and I picked this up from Murray, uh, uh, particularly if you take a strong exegetical approach to systematic theology, then you know, there's going to be such an integration, and that, and that interface is always of interest to me. It's kind of a roundabout way of getting at your question. Um, I, uh, I hung on, when I transitioned in the systematic theology, I hung on in the New Testament uh, required courses to Acts and Paul course. So I taught that course, uh, actually I was looking at had occasion to look at my notes. I started teaching that course in 1972, and I taught it through 2010. So, um, and then actually a part of the Paul part in 2015. Um, but um, the um, so the idea was uh, the publisher uh, with the technology that's available uh, provided me with. Um, uh, electronically uh, transcribed text of the audio lectures from a particular year, uh, 2005, when I gave it course. And um, so that was sort of the base, and the idea was that I would put uh, the course material in some kind of publishable form. Uh, and. Uh, I think the idea, at least I had kind of naively, as it turned out, that it would be um, a, uh, you know, I'd sort of tweak these lectures, but uh, it, uh, as was commented earlier, putting something in, in writing, uh, it, it's, it's just different. Um, but all the, but I'm, I'm mentioning all this because the shape of the course has determined the shape of the book for, a, for, the, for the large part. So it's basically, um, you know, the way I put it, I, I've, the book intends to provide, uh, assuming someone has had some uh, more or less undeveloped uh, exposure to uh, Acts and Paul, kind of an initial deep dive into the material in order to get an overview on Acts and Paul. So I've focused in, uh, as this was done in the course, I focused in the Acts part on Pentecost and its, uh, its significance, stressing its redemptive historical uh, Historia Salutis significance. And uh, I've tried to develop things positively, but always in the background uh, because uh, this very much shaped the teaching of the Course, our, uh, you know, the whole emergence of the charismatic movement and uh, the charismatic uh, Pentecostal uh, construal of Pentecost, uh, which um, you know, if you make the distinction between Historia and Ordo Salutis, uh, stresses the uh, 
experiential and applicatory uh, significance of, of, of Pentecost. Uh, I might just mention when, when I uh, came on faculty in the mid 60s and in, into the early 70s, uh, that was when uh, the so-called Jesus movement was in uh, you know, pretty full uh, uh, manifestation. And we began getting a, a number of students coming to Westminster out of uh, typically uh, being converted in college uh, through, um, uh, through some one or other form of, of, of charismatically oriented student ministry, uh, but uh, in their own development, interested in Reformed theology, but with uh, with um, charismatic, charismatic convictions and well just in terms of my own life spiritual development I, I was very challenged what ought to be the expectation in my own life of the work of the Holy Spirit mm. uh, uh, particularly you know ought I be seeking to speak in tongues and uh, uh, you know, challenged, uh, you know, I'm not that much older than the students I'm teaching at this point, and uh, uh, so I wrestle with a lot of issues. So that really brought uh, a lot of, that, I'm mentioning all that, that feeds into the, uh, the way the Acts part got developed, and then uh, uh, the, the Paul part was, uh, it, it, it's developed more than my, in a different formatting than my dissertation work, but the dissertation work is uh, uh, the, uh, you know, I, I basically, uh, that shaped how I handled the Paul part of the course. So uh, that's a kind of long roundabout way of answering uh, what, I, what do I hope? Uh, I don't see myself as having a produced a volume that uh, is interacting with my academic peers, whoever they might be exactly, uh, but um, for um, someone who wants um, an initial in-depth exposure uh, and the capacity uh, on their uh, to develop in their own ability to uh, look at the letter at, at the letter at the theology of Paul and of of Acts, and it is very much a volume that deals with theology. Mm. Um, I don't. Any work in New Testament has to deal with uh, background issues, introductory issues. Uh, uh, in the course, I left that almost entirely to out of classroom assignments, and um, similarly in 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 this volume. Uh, so far as Paul is concerned, it's not sort of going through letter by letter, but um, you know what is the theological? You could even say substructure yeah. that gives rise to. Uh, uh, what comes to expression in the in the various letters. Yeah.